Right, second part of shape, we're going to sort of be breaking down uh, the Prendeth Panthers. Big fan of everything they're doing out there. Love the shape, I uh, love their attack. Obviously, it's all built off the back of Upi Curacao and uh, Nathan Cleary, who had a massive game on the weekend. But just really, really liked them, like the dynamic of them. Um, I think in this style of competition, 2020, when it's games back to back to back, I think they've got the youth and they've got the depth and they've got enough experience now to sort of potentially go all the way. And if you want to have a look on someone for Dally M, I think Nathan Cleary could be, could be a guy. But let's rip into it. Uh, Penny Panthers. Uh, so first shape here, sort of Jack and Jill. We talked about this on the very first episode. Um, it's a great combination. Nathan Cleary, he can put it on a dime wherever you want. Um, this left edge, if you want to have money on any time try scorers and you're back in Penrith, pick someone on this edge because they're usually going to score a try because they've got so much strike weapons. They've got Kikau, he's good in the air. Uh, Steve Crichton, who's an absolute fucking gun, he's good in the air as well. And then Jerome Lewis, just class. He's got skill about him, so um, he can finish it off. Here we go again, here's the jack, we talked about this here, here's jack, he taps it back to the Jill spot, and there's always a pass option. We talked about this, winger has got to come in, undefendable space back here, but Jerome, just reads the situation, scores a try. Really good player, Jerome, big fan of him. Boom, Crichton. Good things just happen around Crichton, there's special players. Another thing, to win a comp, you need players that are playing more than they're actually worth. I don't know what Steve Crichton's on money-wise, but the way that he's actually playing, he's probably playing like a $600,000, $700,000, $800,000 center, where he might be only getting paid maybe $150,000 or $200,000. You need those types of players that perform above their pay wicket to win a comp, and you've got to have your big dogs there as well. So if you looked at Penrith, if you looked at Cronulla back in the day when they had Jack Bird and Valentine Holmes, I'm not too sure what they were getting paid at the time, but they're performing at a higher level, and it's an important fact for winning comps. Nathan Cleary, this is what make, makes Nathan Cleary very, very good at the moment. He's got tempo to his game, and um, there's two different ways that you can play 5-8, and both are very effective, complete opposite styles, where you've got the Luke Carey style where everything's fast and over the end line, and you move at such pace that it puts pressure on the end line, so oh, puts pressure on the D line. The style of that is Nathan Cleary, and this is very much Trim Barrett's style of coaching and halves, where um, there's variation on your tempo, and he does this very well. So if you watch the Panthers play, Nathan Cleary's job, all this little area here, middle part of the field, he controls. So whenever they're shape and they sort of play post to post, so they'll get the ball here, they'll go to far post, and then he'll hold the shape here and run the shape there, and then I have the option of um, Dylan Edwards on this side or Jerome Luai on this side. But his job is always to control the middle part of the field. A bunch of different options, and his, probably his favorite player is this one here, where he'll go drop, drop, boom, take off. See that? It's like slow, slow, take off. So this is what they coach. So Nathan Cleary catches it on 12 meter line. It gives you enough space. The D line comes to you. You don't have to be moving at the air line. And they go dr drop, drop, and then takes off. So what Nathan Cleary can do and sees out of the corner of his eye, he can see the young half. He's already up and looking at him. So what that means is if your half's looking at me, there's space out there somewhere. And he realizes it. Boom, out the back, kitties. All the way over. Billy Burns, I like watching Billy Burns play. He's silky, yeah, he's got a bit of skill about him. So when you watch the Panthers play, they'll have their shot and then Nathan Cleary will hold his shape here. So here's Nath, and he always has his two middles here. And he do, they do it on many parts of the field and the variations off the back of that are really good. The important part about this, especially when they lay their neck shape. So say we go to far post, um, we're gonna do our reset play here and has Isaiah Yao here. Good thing about Isaiah Yell, good thing about Fisher Harris, they've got great leg speed as well. So, because Nathan Cleary can play tempo, like slow, slow. You know how some forwards, they need to be coming off the back fence to have a great carry on them? A lot of Panthers forwards, they don't have to do that, and it comes down to personnel. So, Nathan Cleary can go slow, and then he'll drop Isaiah Yell off, and say they're doing it back here on the 40 meter line. Same shape. When they drop him off there, Isaiah Yo, because he's so strong through the base and strong through his legs and he's really big body, he can actually make yards off the back of that. And very similar to how I talked about Cam Smith and the other one, what, what, what Nathan Cleary does is, so they go to this far post, they go here, they drop uh, Yao off, and then he's in the 50. All Nathan Cleary does is just play on the up with the double. So the guy who's the second drop, he'll go into, um, that's Nathan Cleary here, he'll keep this guy as a shadow, Jerome out the back, Kikau.
So there's so many variations off the back of it, but they do set that off a lot of the time off the back of the double drop shape. Isaiah Yeo, a really good player. I've got no clips of him here, but I feel like he should be in the rep conversation. I feel like he should be in the origin conversation. Only reason he's not, in my opinion, is because he's not really like a big personality. He's a country kid. He loves like, whenever we used to get four days off, all us boys would be heading towards the city, trying to go out the sheaf and double bay and all that. He'd be going straight home. Just a country kid, loves being around his family. He doesn't say too much and he's always he was always going to be a very good first grader when he debuted he debuted at center and he sort of come through a great 20 side but no one really knew who he was but obviously Ivan had a massive rap on him and he debuted at center and he debuted against Joey Leilua and I'm like oh fuck he could get a bath there locked up Leilua on his debut and done a very good job on him defensively and when you can come into first grade and the defense is sorted this sort of attack side really starts to come so um, Isaiah Yao he's got that play there another one that they run is Upi Curacao they'll be right on the line Fisher Harris here so that'll be Fisher Harris, and then um, Isaiah Yell will be here. So this guy will run a block, Fisher um, Yell runs out the back of there, and then I have another forward like that running that line, and then Nathan Cleary sits out the back. So that's the other variation that they have on top of it. And because he's got a, because he's a genuine run threat, it opens up his pass out the back as well. So pay attention to Isaiah Yell, even though he doesn't get the raps that the Victor Radleys and, and those types of guys have who have great social media personalities. Pay attention to Isaiah Yell, he's a fucking really good forward. When you got your halfback coming out making on shots and you're at home and you got that panther noise going That's important. Not only has he put on the first shot, he's put on the second one. I know he's not I know he's forced an error, but fuck that is a bad tackle. Oh look at that little push in the back too. And then what he does, he just goes straight into shape. And see this this, this is the Panthers attack here. It doesn't really show on this because it's only a highlights video. But, um, so they've knocked the ball on here, which is like this post here. Look, look at Jerome, he's just trying to get them into their next spot. See that, see him pointing? He's trying to get them to his, this post over here so they can fall into shape. So what he does, he carries the ball over there and then Nathan Cleary just sits back up here. Um, Jerome Luai will be there, he's got his four there, we've got all strike weapons, and then they can attack both ways. So whenever there's a breakdown in play, they just go to the far post and then they just set it up. And the variations off the middle can change this is a bad tackle, man. This is the, you know when rugby union fullback shot and tackle wingers and their head's always in the wrong place? This is one of those ones. Ah, <laughs> uh, what do we go? So Nathan Cleary's ran the ball here. Obviously he's seen something that he's liked. Isaiah Yell, great ball from up at Curacao. Boom. This is the importance of a great number 14 and, and Tyrone May is that guy for the Penrith Panthers. When you look at Tyrone May, he's not like the biggest, he's not the fastest, he's not the strongest, but fuck, he's a really, really good footballer because he can do everything. He's probably one of the players that could play every position on the field. Almost like a Tyrone Peachy style mold, but he does it in his own way and he's just got, he's just an out and out footballer. Um, if Panthers going to go all the way, I think Tyrone May needs to be healthy as well because what he does, he actually gives him a bit of variation. And the way they play off the back of this is so like, um, say we're playing off a of 50. Cause, um, Cause Tyro Mays is just a natural footballer and a very good footballer. He can play out the front, he can play out the back. What they can do now is actually play block shape on both sides. So say Nathan Cleary comes to this side and then he's got Dylan Brown at the back of him. They can also run the same shape on this side. So they've got Jerome Luai and then Tyro May out the back as that. It just gives them another option of ball playing. And so they get to the middle, quick play the ball. Up in Curacao will just pick his pass. Boom. Probably on long there, dummies, right play to do, boom, offload. Steve Kreider, man, silky, silky, silky. Man, well, it was probably one of the best rookie classes we've had in a while. Obviously, got Kreider in there, got Harry Grant there, got Bradman Bess. Man, the rookies are just getting better and better. Yeah, Billy Burns, gun. Um, yeah, versatility of Tyrone May here, set center. Even though that stuff's basic, some of these people could fuck that up. <laughs> No, no, you're not, Renato, you're not ready for those ones. Played off Renato, great kid, fucking talented as fuck. And Nathan Cleary here, here's the tempo. Slow, slow, dummy, take off, palm. So he's gone dummy, gone dummy and palm, but then once he takes off, he's quite quick as well. So he's got a big body, he's confident, he's putting on shots, but that's the different styles of tempo that Nathan Cleary can play with. Um, very, very versatile half. Over there, boom, bang. <laughs> Off to the Leagues Club. Gil's chasing you around the Leagues Club in the pokey room. So yeah, that's the Panthers, while they can win. Um, Isaiah Yell, big part of the, everything that they do through the middle. Up Curacao, the tempo that he plays with, the ability to fix up markers. Uh, Nathan Cleary, 
probably the game's best half at the moment or in the most form at the moment. Tyron May, the importance of a good 14 coming off the bench. And then you've got your star started fucking left side with Crichton and Villian Mikiko. Well coached as well. So Panthers fans should be getting excited. <laughs>